Good morning, you guys. Just inviting everybody in from the waiting room right now. Good morning. Good morning. Give everybody a minute or two to get in here. Ooh, Cassidy's outside. It's a nice day today, isn't it? Let me see everybody's faces at first. Can you guys make sure at least at first I get to see your faces? Because it makes me happy to see you guys. Yay. <laughs> So when I was when I was a kid, there was this show, oh, I can't remember what it was called, but Miss Mary Ann was the um, like the star of the show, and it was a kids show, and it was almost like a preschool that happened on TV, and she would um, she would say good morning to all the kids, and she would say I see Cassidy and I see Carrie Ann, and she would pretend like she was seeing kids at home, and she would just make up their names. I'll have to remember the name of that. Ah, uh, memories, memories. Um, so how's everybody doing? Anything new and exciting happening? Yesterday I raised money for charity. Oh, that's nice. What'd you do, Mason? Uh, I live streamed playing games. <laughs> Very cool. How much money did you raise? $61. Nice. And then what charity is that going towards? Uh, it's going towards like a coronavirus, like a, it's a big fundraiser. So I was a part of a, of a bigger event. So it went to a few charities like the United Way Worldwide and the United Nations Foundation, things like that. That's very nice. Good for you. Very cool. All right. Well, it looks like we've got about 20 people in here and it doesn't look like anybody else is jumping in right now. Anybody else have anything interesting to share like what Mason just told us? No. Okay. Well, if you think of something, jump in and, and let us know. Um, and if the um, having your video on affects your Wi-Fi, you're welcome to turn your face off if you would like to turn your video off. But, um, but I do enjoy getting to see your guys' faces. So anyway. Um, all right. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody so that... Um, um, so that you guys, I don't know if that works. I think that you just see me when I mute everybody. Um, and then if somebody talks, I think you see them. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I want to start off with just a couple of things. Um, I want to make sure you guys know that um, I'm updating Aries at the end of the week every week. Um, and even if you're turning stuff in late, like after I've updated Aries, um, I'm still getting it in there pretty quickly after you turn it in. Um, and so that's a way that if you look in Aries, that'll let you know if I've gotten everything that you've turned in or not. Sometimes people are forgetting to hit submit. And so I don't know that you've turned something in. So, um, you can kind of keep that in mind. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so let me know if there is something that you've turned in that, um, that I haven't given you credit for. Um, cause keep in mind everything that you guys are turning in, it should be full credit. Um, and it should be making your grade go up. Um, there are a few people that have some assignments still from, um, like the volume project and the assignments that you guys have turned in already that you haven't gotten full credit on. Um, and so you can, um, fix them and resubmit them and get full credit. So just wanted to make sure you guys knew about that. Um, I wanna make sure you guys know the, um, that I have office hours that are specifically for you guys that are Tuesday mornings, Friday mornings at nine, um, and then Wednesday uh, afternoon at two. Um, and then I have um, other office hours for just all my math students. Um, every afternoon at two o'clock. Um, and then on Wednesdays, I have an extra hour after your guys's hour. So, um, 
So if you need help with anything, I'm there every afternoon and then special time for you guys on um, Wednesday afternoon and then also Tuesday and Friday. And I think I've got that posted in Google Classroom somewhere. Um, let's see, what else did I want to do? Okay, so I last week tried to take attendance by going, is Jackson here, is Christine here? And that took a really long time, especially when I did that with my math three classes that are together and there were 45 of them in one class. That took a really long time. So I've tried to, um, I created a, um, a Google form that I'm gonna have you guys complete for me right now. So I'm gonna put the link for it in the notes, in the chat. Um, so I'm getting that ready to send to you guys right now. Um, and I think you guys will be able to just um, click on that link and that will allow me to see um, like later on, I can check to see who's here and who's not. So if you guys would take just a second to go in and respond to that, it's literally just typing your name in. So that would be really great if you guys could do that. Okay, good. I got a few people in there already. So that's good. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a lot easier than actually trying to ask who's here, who's not here. Um, okay, let's see. While you guys are finishing up with that, um, I did want to show you guys a couple of things in Google Classroom to make sure everybody um, has access to all of the resources I'm trying to provide for you. Um, let's see. So let me go to Google Classroom and I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Um, and so, you know, after you're done completing that Google form, you can pop back over here. And if you aren't seeing this now, you could always watch the recorded version later. Okay, so in Google Classroom, I've got things organized by topics. So, um, you know, if you click the classwork, um, the classwork button, then um, you should be able to see you know, here's the stuff for this week. Um, there's the stuff for last week, distance learning week one. Um, here's where the Zoom meetings are. And so this is where I'm posting, you know, where our class meetings are. And when we did the Desmos slope field activity, um, and then um, like this is where the, the volume project and those two assignments were from, you know, before we got started. So it's, it's organized in here by, um, by that. I put something else in today and I just realized it's probably down at the very bottom. Um, so I'll move that up. But in this tips for AP exam, I put a document in there that I'm going to talk about um, in our live class today. But just so you guys know, it's in that tips for the AP exam topic there. Um, let's see, stop sharing that for just a second. I wanted to show you guys also the difference between um, seeing a, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to flip back and forth between these. Okay, so let me try sharing my screen again. I wanted you guys to see the difference between if I, if um, somebody scans, and so this is, um, Zach, I hope you don't mind, I'm, I'm using yours as an example. This is when somebody scans their work, um, it's all one big thing that I can kind of scan through and look at, and it's really a lot easier for me to view and see what you're doing and be able to give you feedback then if it doesn't look like something's quite right. So um, again, I've put stuff about how to scan things, and I can, if you don't know, I can um, repost stuff about how to scan things um, with a phone instead of using a picture. Um, let's see, can you guys now see, um, Lilith, I'm sorry if this is embarrassing you, but Lilith ha had a picture and, um, so I just want you guys to see the difference. Did you, did you guys see it switch to Lilith's? Okay. Um, so it's not very big. I have to click between the different pages instead of just scrolling, which isn't that big of a deal, but you can see it takes time for each one to load. I have to zoom in to be able to see it. And sometimes, and this didn't happen on Lilith, sometimes I, I'm not able to see the bottom of the picture. Um, and so there may be stuff on the bottom of your page that I really can't see very well. So anyway, that's kind of the difference between um, if you've scanned something versus um, taking a picture of something. So 
Um, if you guys could try to make that happen, that really helps me out, especially when I'm having to grade 150 plus things online on a computer. Um, it just, you know, it, it really helps me out. And if you can't figure it out, if you're not able to do it, the picture is totally okay. So um, don't, you know, don't stress if you can't do it. Um, let's see, it looks like only 11 people were able to respond to the live calculus Zoom attendance. So I can't get the link to work. Okay, so that's what I was kind of hoping for. So um, maybe, uh, yeah, and I was guessing that was probably quite a few people. I wonder if you guys are logged in with a different account right now. Maybe you have to be logged in with your school account. And so um, maybe because whatever device you're on is um, not logged into the school account or something. Maybe that's the issue. Um, no. Okay. Well, it's an experiment and it's not working currently. I wonder if I could change the settings on it. I don't know. Um, anybody want to jump in? Anybody have any advice for me on why that link may or may not be working? Or uh, I'm on my school account and it isn't working. Yeah, carry in. Um, that's all right. I'll remember who's here. I hope. <laughs> for you guys, it's a lot easier because it's just you know there's 21 of you guys that are here, and um, it's that math three class when there's. 45 of them that's that's kind of tricky okay so anyway um i'll that that'll be a work in progress i'll try that again another time um i might be able to do that a different way let's see um another thing too is um anytime you're turning something in late um i've asked you guys just to make sure you let me know that you need a little extension on it and if you do that right in the assignment itself, that's um, a nice place for me to be able to see. It's, it, it makes it easier for me to keep track of who asked um, for an extension on the assignment. And so it's not a big deal if you have to turn stuff in late. Um, I just really appreciate it if you say, you know, I was working today or I was, you know, raising money for charity today, so I didn't get a chance to do it, but I'd, you know, like to have an extension. And if you do that right there in the assignment, um, then it makes it easy for me to see that you turned it in late, but you had a good reason for it. So I, I appreciate that. And let's see, any other concerns or issues that we should talk about before I get into um, some more like calculus kind of stuff? Okay. Again, if there's something that comes up, um, you know, just let me know. I know the, sl the first assignment where you had to sketch in a slope field, um, that was difficult to do if you couldn't print things. And so, um, you know, if, uh, let me see, where do I have that open? Um, so let me share that with you. So I tried to put some advice there, um, but you know, if there's other things that are like that um, in terms of, um, having issues being able to do things um, you know you guys can just reach out and let me know um, okay so a couple of things this um, this was the assignment here um, and I wanted to talk kind of briefly about how it works I know a lot of you guys have kind of done this already but if you really think about these as like um, like for me I think about it as the current like in the river and if you were to drop a stick in the river, which way would the current take that stick, right? And so you can kind of imagine how those currents would be moving that stick. Um, Mark in the video talked about trying to stay kind of in between the marks and also parallel to them. And so something like um, this one here, when I move to the left, I want to kind of take the average of these two slopes here as I move in between these two. And then as I move to the next one, again, kind of trying to imagine the average of those two. And when you're sketching these solution curves here, um, they're not gonna be exactly perfectly accurate. Um, in fact, when I draw them, I tend to kind of 
um, you know, do a little bit here and then kind of go back and look at that. And, you know, when you're all done, kind of take a look and see, is there anything um, that you, you feel like needs to be fixed thinking about that river current again? Um, so um, they're not gonna be perfect um, and that is okay. So try to uh, give yourself a break with that. I learned this new annotating thing, which I'm excited about. So I wanted to show you guys that. Um, let's see. If I switch windows, can you guys? No, I don't think it's going to let me do that. Okay. So let me show you guys. There, there was this card sort that we did last week, um, and I did the the office hours on Friday morning with some people and posted this. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys because I wanted you guys to see that there are some people that um, still, you know, that, that got them all right. There's a couple people that still need to fix them. Um, and I tried to give you some feedback for those people that needed to fix them in the assignment where it's due. Um, and there's only 23 people here, which tells me that everybody doesn't have it done. So um, that is something that you have access to that you should be able to go back and fix or, um, uh, or complete it if you haven't done that yet. Um, so let's see. Um, one of the things they talked about was um, writing equations of lines. I can't remember if that was in the first lesson or in the second lesson, but there was a review piece on having to uh, write a linear approximation. And so just wanted to kind of reinforce to you guys the idea of using point slope form rather than slope intercept form. Um, so you can go back and re-watch that part of the video if um, you're not familiar with that, but that's something that's super helpful. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody was clear on what they mean by separate the variables. And so I'm going to go back into one of those um, screens to show you guys um, to kind of talk about what that means to separate the variables. So give me just a second as I switch to the right page here. Okay, so let me share this with you guys. Okay, so this was one of the assignments that I gave you guys. Um, and the idea of separating the variables is you've got a dy in the top and a dx in the bottom. Um, or like a DP in the top and a DT in the bottom, and to take whatever that differential in the bottom is and multiply it over to the other side. So that tells you that the D, that everything with a P in it has to be over here on the left side, and everything with a T in it is going to multiply over, and the T, the DT is going to multiply over, and so everything in a T with a T in it will be over here on the right side. Um, so, you know, in one like this, you move the dx over here to the right side, and this whole expression here then, which is uh, an expression with y in it, you're going to have to divide that away to move it over to the dy side, okay? Um, let's see. So that's, that's the idea there. I just wanted to make sure you guys kind of understood the idea of um, separating the variables. I'm actually looking at number three and I'm not sure how you separate those variables. Anybody want to jump in and talk about that? Because you can't divide when there's an addition sign there. Um, I will also say that this particular thing, I know when they first posted it, it had like boxes on it they talked about. And I can tell you when um, I printed it at my house, it didn't have some of the signs in it. So, um, you know, if you haven't done this yet and you, and you are planning on printing it, just be careful. You might have to open this document to take a look at that there. Um, anybody want to jump in and talk about this number three here? Okay, well, the answers are here on the back. Hey, look, it says not separable. <laughs> um, so again, the thing that I saw that made it not separable was that the X and the Ys were being added together. And the only way you can separate is by multiplying or dividing. Because when you multiply that DX over here, that DX is multiplying this whole side there. Okay, so that 
uh, it, BC and like beyond in calculus, I think you may have to solve differential equations when they're not separable, um, but we're just doing the ones that are separable. So I um, wanted to talk about that. Um, let's see, I'm doing pretty good on time. Yeah, so I wanna take a minute and show you guys um, a little more detail. I, I asked you guys in um, my Google Classroom post to talk about or to, um, to make sure to watch the second video before class today because that's the separating variables. And there was one example that I said at 33 minutes is particularly tricky. And so I am, let's see, I haven't plugged in my document camera in a little while. Let me see if I can get that thing to work because I think that'll be the easiest way to show you guys. Can I? Get that guy to come up. Hmm. Let me try something else. Okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna get it. Here we go. Sharing with this guy. Okay, so let's see. I want you guys to be able to see. And it was this example here that they were doing at 33 minutes. Um, and so can you guys see that all right? I know it's not great, but can you kind of see it? Okay. Um, so the first thing they did is, um, you know, and they kind of, they, they did walk you through some steps. So I'm gonna kind of skip to the parts where it gets a little bit tricky, I thought. Um, so you get to the point where you do the antiderivative and then they have, you have to undo the natural log. And so she says, you exponentiate both sides. Um, and so, you know, since the base of the log is E, you would raise, oh, that's not supposed to be an A, that's supposed to be a carrot. You would raise both sides. Um, to a power that has base E because then the E and the LN cancel each other out to give you just that absolute value of Y minus four by itself. So I'm gonna come over here to write that absolute value of Y minus four by itself. And then on this right side here, I now have E to the power of T squared plus C, E to the power of T squared plus C. Um, and then one thing that she talked about kind of real quickly is that you can split that up using the rules of exponents, right? If you're adding the exponents, um, you can split that up. So I always use an example that I think makes more sense to me. If I had x squared t uh, plus, let's say three, that's the same as x squared times x to the third. Right, and so that's why this right here splits up into something like this. And so I just, I think that that right there is something that you guys would be familiar with and makes sense. Um, and then this part right here, um, you know, that kind of explains why that works. And then she says, this magically turns into just some other C because E is just a constant. And so now you've got this new constant. And um, so then that kind of takes care of everything there. Um, so does anybody have any other questions on that? Um, because like I said, I thought that that um, was a one thing that I thought was particularly tricky. Um, so I just wanted to check in with you guys. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Um, I do want to talk about um, the updates to the AP exam. I shared a... a a document with you today that I thought had some of the most important information about the exam on it. Um, and so I do want to talk about that. Um, and then I will just kind of address any questions that you guys may have had on the homework at that point. Okay, so let me get to the AP exam updates page and then we will, um, and then I'll take questions. And if you guys want to um, check out at that point, and you don't have any questions, then that's totally fine. Okay, so let me share that with you. That's that one. Okay, 
So one of the, um, the first things was just talking about exam security and, um, you know, this is going to, this, this in particular is going to be for all AP exams, not just the calculus AP exam. Um, but, you know, they talk about some details of exam security. Um, one thing that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of is that they are, um, you know, they're really going to be looking for plagiarism. They really want to see proof that it's your own work. And I think that that's, you know, a big challenge. And so you don't want to give them any opportunity to question your integrity. Um, so I put this here so you can read some of the details about that, um, but just don't give them any reason to question, um, you know, that your work is your work and your work alone, um, because they are, that's a big concern for sure. Um, I put the link to this particular thing here um, in case you wanna go directly to that site. Um, but all the AP exams are open book and open note. And so you, um, you know, they have some tips on taking open book and open note tests um, that I think are really helpful here. Uh, one thing is making sure that you, um, you know that you are going to be very limited on time and you are not going to have time to flip through a bunch of pages or to flip through your book. Um, and so, you know, to kind of have everything that you might want to have ready to go organized and right next to where you are working. Um, and also making sure that you are using those resources to say things in your own words. Um, you should not copy responses from your notes or your resources, um, because again, that goes back to that test security thing. Um, they have a note here about um, your notes are better than internet searches. So even though you may be able to do an internet search while you're taking the AP exam because they can't see what you're doing, although I do think that they may try to lock screen so you couldn't do it on the computer you were on. Um, who's to say somebody doesn't have another computer right there next to them? Um, just that you don't know what's on the internet. You don't know what's right and what's wrong. And so. Um, that and then um, collaborating with others is not considered acceptable open notes. So like Jack, who's at my house, cannot talk to me about the AP exam while he's taking it, right? And you can't talk to your parents or an older sibling or anything like that. Um, so you are to do it completely on your own. Um, down here at the bottom, um, here is kind of the details of our AP exam um, and I, did paste in here one for the BC topics also. Um, and just a quick note on the BC topics or on the BC exam, something that I heard, and I haven't confirmed this myself yet, um, but I heard that they are not, if you take the BC exam, they are not doing an AB a, subscore like they have in the past, like they usually do. Um, and so I think that that is something to definitely take into consideration if that's something that you were considering doing. Um, they are still kind of letting you decide um, up until um, like the third week in April or something like that. So you do have some time to decide still. Um, and this here document does kind of show specifically what is on each of the tests. Um, and so it might be a good idea to kind of look at this and to see if you feel comfortable um, with the BC test if that's something you're planning to do. Okay, so both AB and BC are taking the test in the Pacific time at 11 a.m. I think we're kind of lucky that that's, you know, an, a nice time to be able to take it. Um, you, you can kind of read the details here, but there's going to be two questions. Um, it talks a little bit um, in detail about the questions there, but the first question, you have 25 minutes with another five minutes to upload your responses. And then the second question you have 15 minutes for, and um, again, well, and then some time afterwards, I think, to, um, to submit that. And then you can see the percent of weight for each of those two questions. Um, so, you know, the first question, you're allowed more time and it's weighted more. So you're going to want to keep that in mind when you're taking the AP exam. Um, so both questions are free response questions that will have lots of different focuses. Um, and they both are 
assessing your knowledge and skills developed in two or more of the units and topics. Um, yeah, so there's some details there. This is stuff that I've talked to you guys about before that the AB exam is on units one through seven, not included is unit eight. Um, and then there's some other info. You should definitely make sure that you have a graphing calculator to use um, because that's something that they, I think, are expecting everybody to have access to. And while you could do that kind of stuff on a computer, I just think, um, you know, be comfortable with um, your, you, we've been using calculators throughout the year. I would say you're comfortable with them at this point. Make sure you're practicing using them because you will have access to them on the, on the test. So, um, and then this right here, I think is something that they say every year when you're doing the free response portion, which is all you guys are doing, you do not have to simplify. In fact, they say don't simplify because if you make an error when you're simplifying, um, you don't get a point. So just remember that. Okay. And like I said, there's the, the BC stuff down here at the bottom of that document. So, um, and like I said, I did share that on Google Classroom this morning. So you guys have access to that um, and feel free to look at it as you like. So I am going to, let's see, I think that is everything I wanted to make sure I talked about today. Um, if you are watching this and you are not watching it live but watching the recorded version make sure that you complete the google form later saying that you did complete it so that i know that you got to see it um and then let's see before you guys sign out let me just make sure i have everybody that's here Ugh, this is kind of a hassle hang on a second Okay, so I see Adrian, Christine, Coleman, Grace, Hannah, Jack, Jackson, Josh, Carrie Ann, Cassidy, Kieran, Lizzie, Lydia, Mael, Maggie, Mason, Ophelia, Ryan, Sarah, Sophia, and Zach. So who's not here? <laughs> Robert told me he wasn't coming, so I know he's not here. Let's see, is Lilith here? That was a name I didn't remember seeing. Um, let's see, we have 21 people in here and 26 in the class. Let's see, Josh, Mael, Jackson, Dawson's not here. Adrian is here, right? I think I said Adrian, right? Thanks. Um, Jack's here. Coleman's here. Lizzie, Mason, is Shane here? No Shane. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, so one more. Ophelia, Maggie, Ryan, Karen, Hannah, Carrie Ann, Cassidy. Is Wesley here? Okay, so I think I got everybody that's not here. All right, so I think I'm good there. So if you don't have any questions on the assignments, you can feel free to, um, to leave the meeting. If you want to jump in and say a quick goodbye before you go, that'd be swell, um, but you don't need to. And if you have a question, go ahead and jump in and go ahead and ask your question. Thanks for coming, everybody. Good to see you guys. Hi. <laughs> I have a question about the third assignment that's supposed to be due Friday. Okay, so let's hold off on that to make sure everybody gets their questions on the first two because we have, um, you know, limited office hours to get the first one turned in, and then we have some office hours tomorrow afternoon for the second one, um, and then Friday if we've got office hours we can do to talk about the third one too. So let's, is, does anybody have questions on any of the other ones? I'm happy to get to your question, Christine, if nobody has anything on the first two assignments. I have a question on the first assignment, but like the second, not the second page. There was, because you know how there were like two? Uh -huh. um, and it was asking to sketch the slope field at nine of the different points. And I it was kind of overwhelming, like if I needed to plot the entire, like, um, I forget what they're called. Yeah, the entire slope field, basically, uh, to do that. Okay. So you're talking about this one here, I think? Yes. Okay. Um, sketch the slope field at the nine included point. So all you have to do to sketch the slope field is you know, take the point negative one, one, and plug that into the differential equation to figure out the slope and then draw the slope mark at that point. And then take the point 
zero, one and plug that in. So you are gonna plug in these nine points that are showing into the differential equation there to create the slope field, but it's just creating the slope field at those nine points. And that's all you have to do there. Is that answering your question? Yeah, so I don't have to do the whole, the slope field for the whole equation just at each of those points. You are only making something that looks like this, but only making those marks at those nine points there. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, I am posting the, uh, the solutions, like to the one that's due today, the solutions are posting tomorrow. The one that is due tomorrow, the solutions are posting on Friday. So you guys will have access to them. So you could go back and look at them. Um, if you needed help or if you just wanted to check to see how you were doing on things too, if you don't get a chance to get into office hours to ask for help. So, um, other questions? Okay. So Christine, let's go back to your question then. You said it's from the third assignment. And da, 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 I'm trying to locate mine here. Uh, where do I have it? Okay. Which one do you have a question on? Um, well, to start with number three. And then we could do the rest on an office hours. But it's like where it says answer eight at the top. Answer eight at the top. Okay. Let me find that. All right. So let me go back to my document camera here. Okay. So the one that says the, the top eight one. is the top, right? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just don't know what to do when it says to advance in the circuit, find T one Y equals negative three root two. Okay. So you did your separation of variables here. Mm -hmm. Y dy equals negative two T dt, and you integrated both sides. And what did you end up with for your Y equation? Y equals negative root negative two T plus 36. Okay, so if that's correct, the idea is I then take that and substitute that into this equation here. So I would put the negative six into the y, negative two times, put the zero into the t, and then negative six equals? Uh, negative six. Negative six. So that's saying that the equation is right, but then on the bottom it says to advance the next circuit, so to find the oh, next right, 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 number. Right, right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, to advance the next circuit, find one. Okay, so then I'm gonna put the negative, negative three root two into the that y. Right there, and that'll tell me what to advance. Sorry, that's what I thought I was plugging in. Yeah, but that's the y, so I don't know what to do with the negative, the rest of it. Okay, so I have negative three root two, is equal to negative square root negative 2t plus 36. Okay, so I would say first thing, um, we are basically going to be solving this for t. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative. Um, I want to get rid of this square root here, so I'm going to square both sides. So the three root two squared is actually a three squared times a root two squared. And then on this side, the root and the square cancel out. And so, you know, then you just finish solving that for T. And I think that gives you t equals nine. I'm looking to see, and that's kind of, so that's the nice thing about these circuits is it allows you to see if you've done it correctly because you would in theory find that. So yeah, did you finish solving that? Because I feel like it comes out to be t equals nine, and I don't see that one anywhere. Yeah, because on the video with like verge and 
whoever else, Mark. she, like, showed her paper for, like, because we were looking at number one, uh-huh. and on the bottom of it, it said number four, so the answer should be, like, three. Okay. I guess. <laughs> um, so, let's kind of go through this, then, and um, see if I get the same thing, Whoop. if I keep going with um, solving this, see if I get the same thing because we didn't get an answer that appears. I'm guessing that maybe there was a mistake there somewhere. So I'm gonna anti-differentiate both sides or integrate both sides. And I get a one half y squared equals a negative t squared plus c, right? Because the derivative of y one half y squared would just be y, gives me that. And the derivative yeah. of negative t squared would give me a negative 2t, which is mm-hmm. that. Okay, so then at this point, I would plug that in. And that gives me a one half times zero squared, no, times negative six squared, because that's y equals negative zero squared plus c. So then that's negative six squared, which is 36, and then half of that. So I'm getting that that c is 18. Yeah, c is 18. And so then I'm going to come back over here and plug that 18 into there. I'm going to distribute that one half through. I'm actually going to rewrite this on an, on another piece of paper here because I don't have enough room there. So let's see, I have one half y squared equals negative t squared plus c, and I want to get rid of that one half. So multiply everything by two. Y squared equals negative two t squared plus a new c, and then I would square root both sides. That gives me y equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2t squared plus, oh yeah, my c isn't c anymore. We figured out. 18. 18, right. So you'd multiply that by 2, right? Oh, right. Because here the t was, or the 18, was 18 and, and here then it's 36. 36, and so then here is the 36. Okay, and I have another class that's starting in two minutes, so I'm going to leave you here, but you were missing a t squared there. Mm, okay. Um, and I think you do use the negative one. I think you were right about that. So let me just come back to this real quick and see if I can pick that out. So if this was a t squared 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 then when we got to, oh, we had t squared equals nine, so then t would be three. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. All right, and then you can find that answer on another one. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, signing off. Good to see you guys. Bye, Ms. Jocelyn. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yep.